my name is Martin Kernan and this is my land at Anacramp Kelladen. We have never had anything like this on our land before. This is the first time and it's so exciting. My children think this is brilliant. The Catchment Care Project is installing a network of groundwater monitoring stations in the catchments in the border area of Ireland. They are being constructed so that groundwater can be monitored for decades to come. Groundwater plays a hidden but vital role in our catchments, supplying around 40% of all water in our rivers. There are only two ways to monitor the health of groundwater, at springs and by drilling boreholes. Okay, my name's Paul Wilson and I'm a hydrogeologist. I work for the British Geological Survey on the Catchment Care Project and my job is to be the supervising hydrogeologist on the construction of groundwater monitoring stations in, well in this case, the Blackwater catchment. The first thing that we have to do is work out where to put these groundwater monitoring stations and a hydrogeologist will study all the maps and the information that's available to work out where the best place to do that is to be able to encounter groundwater and to put it into the right context within a catchment. Once a site is identified and permissions are in place, a drilling contractor mobilises their plant to the site. To set up groundwater monitoring stations, we have to drill boreholes into the ground. The method of drilling that we're using here is drill rotary. It's an excellent way of creating a borehole very quickly, but we also get good results out of it in terms of chips to look at the, the geology. And it's also a great way of being able to see whenever we encounter groundwater as well. So this, this is the drill rig which is used. This is mobile and uh, it's a drill rotary rig so they can rotate the top and they rotate the, uh, the bottom here and the bottom rotates the, the steel casing. And this is the, the hammer. So this is a down the hole hammer and on the base you have tungsten carbide bits with uh, exhaust holes for the air to come through and inside the main part you have a hammer which goes up and down and it's driven by air and the bottom basically just bounces up and down like a hammer drill. So the first thing that we do here is called an exploratory borehole. I have an idea as to what's under the ground but we don't really know so we have to drill a borehole to work out what exactly we have in terms of the geology and the groundwater so that then we can decide whether to construct one, two or three different boreholes and what depths to go to and where all the various different uh, levels of groundwater are coming in. As the drill starts, also what goes in is uh, steel casing. And that's because the first few meters of the ground will always be very soft relatively and to make sure that it doesn't collapse into the void that's created during the drilling, they need to have something to keep the hole open. So that's where the drill rotary bit comes in. The steel casing goes down at the same time as the hammer goes down. So this continues until the, the steel casing goes through all of the overburden and reaches rockhead or bedrock. And then it, it stops at that point and the hammer continues on drilling in what's known as open hole. Compressed air flushes through the bit and exhausts all chippings and water back up to the surface. This is called the flush. Sometimes the drillers have to add some, some water and there's also a bit of foam added into that as well too. It's difficult to lift all of the material that gets drilled out from, from depth. So that's added to help create extra volume to the flush so that, that comes up and out back up to the surface. And also it keeps the hole nice and clean of material. This also helps suppress dust. This is especially important when drilling close to other properties. The groundwater is stored mostly in fractures in the ground. The fractures are created whenever there's different forces on the rock, or sometimes they can be created whenever the rock was cooling, if it was maybe a igneous rock or lava. So you get these fractures, so tiny, tiny gaps or planes, and the water takes advantage of that and it moves through those, those gaps. And that's where we find groundwater in, in the rocks in this type of area. When the drill hits a fracture, the hammer action stops because it's got nothing to hit against and that's how we know that we've hit a fracture. At that point, the air goes out into the fracture and then the water is driven back towards the borehole and blown back up to the surface. And that's whenever we know that we've encountered groundwater. Whenever a fracture is encountered, 
we note down the approximate level that it's encountered at, and then the drilling stops. That's so that air can move out into the fracture, and then the fractures are cleaned out or developed, because often they have some silt or some clay stored within them, and it's important to get that out, because that can affect the, the, the quality of the results from the samples that are taken later on. As they're drilling the borehole, I'm listening and watching very carefully to what's happening. I'm also looking at the chips that are coming out and taking some samples as well to understand a bit more about the geology that it's going through. And that helps to be able to characterize uh, the ground that we have beneath us and also to construct the borehole later on. The exploratory borehole is advanced to a depth of up to 100 meters. The hydrogeologist then decides how many boreholes are needed and how they should be designed. The aim with the groundwater monitoring station is to have different boreholes that monitor groundwater at different horizons. So we aim to get a borehole in the superficial material, which is above the bedrock, in the transition zone, which is the boundary between the superficials and the bedrock, and then also the deep bedrock, where you tend to get a completely different type of groundwater that's been in the ground for a lot longer. When the exploratory borehole is finished, it's then reamed out using a 10-inch hammer and that's to create a space to construct what's known as a sanitary seal. So here what the, the guys are doing is they're installing a casing, the plastic casing into the borehole. Around the outside of this plastic casing, they're going to be putting in a cement grout that's going to set over the next couple of days. And the combination of this plastic casing with the cement grout in the annulus basically prevents any of the water that we, we've already drilled through from coming into the borehole. We want to isolate it out. So whenever the borehole has been finished, we develop the borehole. That's where the air is left on, but there's no more hammering action. And that just enables water to come into the borehole and then is evacuated very quickly. It, it cleans the whole thing up and it just gets it ready for whenever the samplers come to take samples for analysis. All of the boreholes are constructed in a very similar way at the same place. Uh, they're located maybe about two meters away from each other. And once one's finished, the rig is moved over a couple of meters and then it, the new one's drilled and constructed at that various, various horizon that we want to encounter that groundwater coming in. So once all three boreholes are completed, the headworks are, are finally done and that's the bit that people will see at the surface. A concrete pad about one meter by one meter is constructed around each borehole. Finally, the monitoring station is protected with various fencing depending upon the nature of the site. The groundwater monitoring station is now ready for use. Groundwater level sensors are installed to monitor how the groundwater levels vary over time. Samples are collected three times a year and analyzed in a laboratory to find out what is dissolved in the groundwater. So, so far in this project, we've encountered some wonderful groundwater and we've discovered amazing things that we never knew before about the groundwater beneath us. That's going to be really useful for the communities that we've put these monitoring stations in because they'll now have the knowledge about the groundwater that's beneath them. If they ever need to use it in the future, then they can do that. But also it means that we're going to gain a fantastic understanding about the water quality in this area and how especially that supports the rivers that flow through this, this area as well.